Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. Today I'm gonna to talk about a concept that all of us as homesteaders need to be doing, if we're not doing it already. Some might be doing it without even knowing they're doing it. And what is that? It's called permaculture. I'm gonna talk about what that is, how we implement it, and why we do. Let's talk about it. So what is permaculture? It is a design system that works with nature and the natural ecosystems around your particular homestead. And this will create a productive, resilient, self-sustaining system on your property. Now, a lot of us homesteaders, we want self-reliance. That's part of the reason why we are doing it. Well, nature helps you along with that if you do it right. It forces you to observe what is around you and creatively use what you have to benefit you and grow. It mostly uses renewable resources and eliminates almost all waste. And it guides you to have a holistic approach to your property and really use everything efficiently. Like I said earlier, many of us are already doing some of these things. Now it has three core ethics, people care, earth care, and then returning the surplus to the first two. Now you're saying, wait, 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 that sounds way too much like tree hugging. Well, it's not. It's being intelligent about the way you use the land. Don't get me wrong, I'm not into that tree hugging stuff. However, God asked us to be good stewards of the land and the earth that he entrusted to us and to care for your fellow man. Example being, if you can and put up 50 quarts of tomatoes a year, but only eat 30 of them, could you share some with your neighbors? Absolutely. And that's how I think of this concept. Some people have hijacked this name and turned it into something that it was never intended to be. Don't listen to them, they're a little off the rocker, especially when it comes to eugenics. Another reason we are doing it is to save money. So if you are using the natural resources intelligently off your own property, you don't have to buy other inputs. That's gonna save a lot of energy, a lot of resources, and a lot of money for you. Let's talk about the best known example first, and that is making compost. And even large companies take advantage of this. Our local compost maker gets a lot of free waste from the tree cutting services, and they turn that into some beautiful compost. They also turn it into wood chips, which are used for mulch. And those break back down and feed your garden, your land. We are trying to use natural materials to mimic natural ecosystems. So on top of that, there are other design strategies that you can use to build your permaculture homestead. Let me talk about what those are and then I will show you what we have implemented on our property. Okay, first one, you can capture and store energy. Second, you can capture and store water. And another is valuing a diversity in plants and not planting a monoculture. Like if you drive through Iowa, it's all corn or soybeans or wheat, whatever it is. Those are heavily sprayed, very dead soils in those areas. It's very hard to grow things now. If people embraced a diversity of plants, we would have things much easier. We want to integrate, not segregate, all right? We want different things in our places. We want different trees. We want different underlying crops, whatever it is. We want to intermix things because that's how nature is and it just works way better than what we've done. You want to leave a place better than when you got there. So build it up. I know a lot of people who have started like food forests in the middle of deserts and planted trees and diverted water so it grows up. That's leaving a place better than when you found it. And if you think this sounds like regenerative agriculture, you're right. Regenerative agriculture is a portion of permaculture. It's that ag portion of it, like no-till farming, grazing cattle and sheep properly, using chicken tractors, all of the above. That's a lot of stuff you hear guys like Joel Salatin talking about all the time. And it is healing to the land so that it produces better. Okay, keeping all those concepts in mind, let me go show you how we are doing permaculture on our homestead. Okay, here are the first two things behind me and it might not look like much, to you, but it is actually a big deal. This portion here with these short pine trees, I stopped mowing years ago so that it would grow up. What that's doing is helping to mitigate the runoff in the water coming down this hill down to our dry creek and washing everything out. 
This area was really barren when it was being cut by the previous owner, and it just allowed that water to just destroy everything down right where I'm standing. Another thing we did was use our box blade on our tractor to actually cut in some trenches into the property to help divert some of that water. Now that trench is kind of filled in a little bit over the years. I need to recut it, but it captures the water coming off here, diverts it around this way, around to the side of the property, and then eventually down to our dry creek. Now you can utilize this concept to divert water wherever you need it and to utilize it for planting. That's a concept that is as old as mankind. I'm still working on trying to build some swales and other things to divert water and keep water in certain areas to benefit the plants that I have in those areas. Now we've tried also to plant, 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 plant a diversity of different plants. And we have this orchard here. I've got several different areas for orchards on the property. And this is also helping on this hill to mitigate some of the water coming off of it. We've got different things. We've got figs and Chinese dates and apples and nectarines and a whole bunch of different things. Now, all this used to be bare before, and we wanted to plant it up into a pseudo food forest. I still do mow between it instead of plant between it, but maybe we'll get to that point in the future where all of this can be integrated together with something else. Okay, the other thing, if you know my channel at all, you know we love solar energy and I am capturing and storing free energy from the sun. Now I have a friend who has the mineral rights, the natural gas rights to his property in Kentucky and they are utilizing that on their property. They are down in a valley of a mountain and solar isn't the best there. So they're using that natural gas to power their property. Solar doesn't work for everybody and I think their strategy for them is perfect. Now you probably don't think this is much. This is a small pile of grass from about a 400 square foot area that I just mowed. I am saving this to make compost. This is a perfect green to add to my layered compost system. I've done a ton of videos on making different types of compost over the years. If you're interested in any of those, go check the link at the top of the screen. So this is something you do not want to waste at all. It is a valuable, valuable natural resource on your property for making compost and eventually making soil for your garden. So I come out here with a rake after I cut and get as much as I possibly can. Now I cut in a specific pattern, so it kind of pushes it together so it's not just scattered everywhere. Just think ahead, observe, and do stuff like this. It's gonna benefit you. And here I am in front of one of my main compost piles. I do different things here. I mostly like to make leaf mold compost, and that is from gathering up all of these leaves in the fall chopping them up and getting them here to break down and start to make soil. What this is doing right now is attracting a ton of worms. Let me just dig down in here really quick and I'll show you what it looks like after just one year. Look at that. It is absolutely perfect, almost near perfect soil to put in your garden. Keeping in that permaculture idea, we are taking all of our scraps from the kitchen, whatever it is, we are dumping them back into the compost pile or into the chicken coop. We keep those chickens for their manure, the eggs, but then we reuse obviously the shells for calcium in the compost pile. We also feed them with the scraps, things like, you know, cabbage leaves or broccoli stems, whatever it is, that's really good for them high in calcium, helps them out. Then we take that manure back and forth. It's all being used together. Another strategy to think of is intelligently cutting and pruning your property because pruning is not bad. Pruning is necessary for health. That's obviously very true when it comes to fruit trees, but it is also true for a lot of other things. So here we mow, but in that section right behind me, between me and the solar panels, you can see I've left it and I've actually cut some grooves into the center of it. What that is, is a natural blackberry stand. It actually has also some dewberries in it and some other vining things, but that is where all of the natural blackberries that we have really thrive, is right in that spot. So I didn't want to mow over it, 
like the previous owner. And then of course we have wood chips. These are great for mulch and they are gonna break down and feed the soil over time. I've got a good wood chipper and we take everything that falls out of the trees and everything that we prune and put them through the chipper, save them for the garden. This is a great renewable resource that does a lot of different things. If you haven't seen our video on building a back to Eden style garden, click the link up here. And lastly, we do rainwater collection. If you wanna see our videos about how we designed and built our system, click on the link above. We use the water that's coming off of my barn and not letting it just fall next to the barn and make that area soggy and kind of run down in one area. But we're using it to actually irrigate the garden, irrigate the greenhouse and other parts of the property. So we're trying to intelligently use all of our natural resources that we've been blessed with here on our property for good. Another strategy you can use is cover cropping and to never let your land lay bare. It doesn't like to be bare, it doesn't want to be bare. So cover it with something good that's going to benefit the soil instead of letting all the grasses just grow up through there. Because then you can kill off that cover crop and more richly use that plot of land for growing. Okay friends, I hope that helps you out in understanding what permaculture is and how important it is for your homestead. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which also has some very important tips for you for your homestead. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.